Okay, here's a cable box board. It's a Motorola green board. This is why I like these boards because they're um, they got nice flat packs. These ones here, gold corner chip flat packs, and they got this kind of memory chips and all that and crystal oscillators. But even these weird things could be tantalums. Actually, I've never seen this before. These blue ones here. Um, can't tell, but you know, tad subs will have a positive and negative. I'm not sure about those ones, but anyways, there's um, monolithic capacitors and so on, and crystal gold cornered crystal oscillators. But what I do is, like I say, I, I don't use a heat gun on on this particular things. Actually, one chip is missing right here. I wonder why. I don't think I took it out. Anyways, uh, what I do is I use a I use like a putty scraper like this, works really good. And I use this for the flat packs mainly. So all I do is I just take this and find a corner and then use a little thing like this, pair of pliers. It just comes off really easy. Just the odd time you have some, you might have something in the way. To see, it comes off really, really easy. So, what I end up doing is I stockpile them in these bags and I'm going to use for gold recovery because these chips I get these all the time, and there's a lot of scrap involved. You get a heavy metal case, you have a board you can still scrap later, throw in the shred. I'll take what I want off it and throw the board in the shred and in the case and all the other stuff, but. These are gold corner chips. These are high yield, usually. A lot of gold bonding wires in these type of uh, chips. And then like I say, you've seen before in my other videos, when I want these kind of chips, I just score the one side like that. There, see? If you do enough of them, they're just so easy. You know, all you have to do is just bend them a bit. Actually, here's my. These are all my IC chips, the main so far. But I'm trying to put the better chips in there, not the crap chips. Actually, this one. This is a little different one here. But yeah, it's kidding. So I put the better chips in there because a lot of IC chips won't have nothing. But these these type of chips are a more possibility of having gold bonding wires. So I'll, I'll take all this off, MLCCs, crystal oscillators, and different things. And with the crystal oscillator, all I do is I take this tool here and I just twist it. That had a bit of glue on there. So I put them in this little pile here. The other one here. It's actually plating on this thing here. But here, pull that off there. And then these gold ones are kind of tough to get off, but you can also, I think maybe with a flat screwdriver might be a little, a little easier if you have a nice sharp one, but I find them really tough. They're kind of shattery. Nope, oh, that one fell down somewhere. Anyways, there's usually a couple on the board. There it is. And if you, if you break that apart, there's actually gold bonding wires in there. You'll actually see them inside there. This is actually a really good good one for gold bonding wires. I've thrown a crystal oscillators for now. Just mix them up in there. But I like this tool here. See, you just go like that. It's got a nice bend in there. So it actually helps you. See that? You get a tool like this. Very good. And then... And the MLCCs, what I'll do is I'll get um, some, like a sheet of paper like this. And then what I'll do, I would just I'd get the screwdriver and kind of put it on an angle. So, well, it disappeared. Okay, like this. You just turn it with a screwdriver and then they collect on this paper.
screwdriver is getting a little bit worn out, but um, you get the point. It should, should be a little bit wider, but you just have to turn, put the screwdriver down and turn it. Put against it and just put a slight little turn, right? I'm just showing the basics here. I can spend hours on this, but I'll depopulate. This is probably like about eight, eight cable boxes. So I go like that. The little turn, see that? Anything that's a fairly good size, I'll take off. But there's, there's probably hundreds on here, but you know, there's only so many ones that are, that are big enough to really deal with that I consider spending my time. Okay. So then what I'll do is a little bit of a little bit of dirt on this one, but anyways I would kind of collect them all up in here. And that's all what I have so far, see. So ideally you want the IC chips, you want the flat packs. These are the ones you're looking for gold mainly. I mean some some of the ones you some are tougher than others, but most of them are generally pretty easy. Someone mentioned use a heat gun. Well, these type of IC chips are so easy. Uh, I would, why, why do I need a heat gun? It was just basically costing you know energy and you're doing this on your own time. Heat gun is good for when you get IC chips. Like these type of IC chips with long legs are a little bit harder. Any kind of flat pack or RAM type chip is just simple to remove. But uh, the ones that have the big thick legs are a little bit tougher. But let's see, as you can see, just like it's clockwork. Here's the one thick legs. See, it's a little, a little tougher, I think. But you know, you can still do it. Or you can use a pair of pliers like this. Just turn it sideways. That's your option too. Could work too for you, right? Here's one chip. It's the Texas Instruments. It's like a flat pack, but it's a high yield chip. You just gotta go like this. Couple of taps. Okay, that one a little bit disintegrated, but it's okay. Doesn't matter if it breaks. Depends how the solder went on, right? It's a lot of smaller IC chips, but you know I feel that they're not that great. But uh, I'll still take some off because they're easy. I'll take a few more things off this board, and this board will be done. Another board here, like I say, you got a gold corner chip, some more, another gold corner chip. There's plating on here also, right? So I'm not taking the plating off right now, but most of this plating, to be honest, is not really that great. It's a very thin, thin plating. So if this was, you know, like 1980s stuff, it would be really good and thick. But being this newer stuff, this board, this might be only 10 years old. This cable box, right? Can even be five years old. So technology for plating, you know, is, they don't need much plating no more. Put very little on there. Okay, so I just wanted to show you how to take the flat packs off. Maybe I'll take a couple more off, just to show you. You don't need a heat gun, and it's it's simple. Very simple. Flat pack. There it is, and then these are uh, the higher yield, almost like the RAM types ICs. They just come off like like simple, a couple of taps. They come off too easy actually, but there it is. You got a couple that fell on the ground, but anyways. Here's your gold corner chip right there, Broadcom. A nice, nice chip. So until you have a really a large amount, once I have a full container, then I'll try processing it. But for now, I'm just, like I say, just stockpiling these at the moment. This one's a 
we'll see how this one comes off the legs. Yeah, I find it just it breaks the chip more. If you just go like this, score it, score the legs. It's so simple. I'm not sure what kind of yield comes out of these type of chips. Someone said they're not that good, but I don't personally know. But here it is. I put these separate. Okay, that's all I want to show you on this. You don't really need a heat gun. I mean, it works too, but you when you use a heat gun, you worry about fumes, lead solder. You know, you're breathing in solder and lead. You don't. You don't want to do more outdoors, not indoors, right? This method is a lot simpler. You're not heating the solder up like you would do the other way. Okay, just want to show a few things. Okay, I'm gonna sort uh, some of the stuff out here. It's raining today, so the weather sucks. It just goes from one extreme to the next extreme here. You have to start processing these things. I should put them over here. Like this one, I'll take the mortar out, cut a little bit of wire, and then. Rest will go into the uh, metal pile. You have to get those uh, big uh, square square crates. Like you see them using for water storage and stuff. I'll try to find some of those. And then we're half of this junk. Fax machines and these older fax machines are good for chips. So eventually I'll have to go through it all. Amazing how many pots and pans you get. Never ending mount. More cords and cables. Like this thing and take it apart. Take the main board out, rest is shred. It's usually pretty good because it's all metal. Not like some things are plastic, which makes it nice. Poles from the uh, little umbrella awnings, usually aluminum. Yeah, 
piece of pot metal here, a nice piece of pot metal. Heavy, right? About six, seven pounds of uh, aluminum. Be like a uh, pot metal, zinc, or whatever, but it's still, it's, you know, 44, 45 cents a pound sometimes, so. Not bad. I'm gonna put this over here. See, look at this, how much water. It's just it's crazy the amount of rain. It was beautiful, weather. you know, yesterday, the last few days was nice, and all of a sudden, just buckets of rain. I'll take stuff off on the side. Brass here. Through these things. Well, that's the last of my spring cleanup, it's right here. All this material here, that's the last of it. So that's, should make more room now. Start processing, start turning the stuff into, uh, into cash and e waste gold recovery, right? Assortment of TVs. You have to get these processed because these take up a lot of room. But they're pretty easy, you just pop off the back, and then you got a nice couple nice boards in there, power board, some other boards and so on. This is a heavy one here. It's old school heavy. Travel like idiots, so. Okay, well, start unloading the rest of this and then figure I can get some, something done in my garage. Actually, hopefully this might work here. That yeah, works pretty good. Swedes. If you don't cut them, they just over overgrow everything here. I have to get the weed eater here and just cut it all up. Especially here, and what these wheels are overtaking everything. Things you, your hands bang. I 
Now it's gonna do some actually yard work today, but the weather sucks. Bend this out a bit, the handles a bit. Hand smack. And it's loose here too. I hope no. Okay, well, that's it for gardening for now. See, that's the problem is, see, you get lots of rain. Then you get dry spells, and then you get major forest fires because you have so much overgrow, growth and stuff, right? It's ridiculous the amount of, you know. And it, it will, everything will be wet today, and then tomorrow it'll be so damn hot that it'll get sunny, and then it will just be dry, like, like it never rained. It's so strange now. Just getting so hot, hot and dry now. The weather. Okay. Okay, it's raining pretty good there. So I think I'm gonna maybe start working on this mess here, in the garage. Well, there's flea market stuff mixed in here. I may, may put flea market stuff in a corner just so it's kind of out of, the, out of the area here. Just don't have a flea market right now. The other one got shut down, so I kind of want to. I only need, you know, an area here. I was going to put some shelves here, I think. I got lots of computers in here, too. The mix, I could throw them outside. You know, a bunch of things I could process and just throw it outside for now just to make the extra room. Here's the shelf. So if I can somehow get it put together properly, and then uh, that I can easily, like I say, you know, put stuff on the shelf, things I want to, you know, process in different odds and ends, and then I can. But I'm gonna first. I need to put some light, extra lighting in this area here, and I have LED lights over there. So I'm gonna maybe screw something in the ceiling, so it's off the plastic a little bit. And then maybe a couple of two by four strips like this, and then maybe a light close to here. My workbench will be here, so it could light up this this area. And I might, might use this table too. So I kind of like that table here. I can uh, you know strip flat screen TVs on there. Like if it's raining like this, I'm just sitting here. Or if it's too hot, if the weather's too hot, I can still kind of work in here, kind of maybe, or you know at least rainy days like this. Just getting totally drenched, basically, and then you might get sick or something, and and then it's no, no fun having the sniffles, right? So, anyways, uh, it's a work in progress. I like that bike here, you know. I'm waiting to take it to flea market. You know, I think it's a little too nice to, to scrap, but you know, look at the baskets getting all bent up and everything. It's just like you kind of have to be able to move the stuff fast. There's so much e-waste here that I have to get rid of. Like, you know, a lot of them are processing now, but all those motherboards, I think I have to sell them 
as they are because I, I'd have no means of processing them. If I take a few components off there, then I lost the value completely. So I best bet is um, sell them the way they are. I might have like two or 300, you know, sell them the way they are. It could free up maybe like 15, 10 or 15, you know, containers, right? And then I can, you know, take the containers off, put the containers there. And all these cable boxes, you take the flat packs off, MLCCs, like I showed you earlier. Uh, components that I can do gold processing myself as just a, a, kind of like a small hobby. Not like in a lar large scale, but just a small scale to learn. You know, learn through trial and mistakes. Just learn a bit. And then after that, when you learn the process properly, then you can get a little more advanced, right? Do larger batches and, you know, set up a dedicated area. And with fume hoods and all that. At a small scale, I can do it outside. You know, not worrying about major fumes. Still wearing protection and safety equipment, right? But you know, when you start doing larger batches, you know, you, you'll have a lot of fumes. So you need to be able to vent it out. But you want to vent it out in a safe location too. You don't want to vent it into your neighbor's window, right? So it's a lot of, you know, a lot of things here when you live in a city. You know, I know guys that live in the country where well, they can do anything they want. They're burning garbage all day long in the country. But when it comes to the city, you know, you have to respect the, you know, everything else, environmental and all that. So... I think the best bet is sell the motherboards, uh, trying to get a good price. Uh, you know, if I go to board store, I'm just going to basically the same price. And then I get the old shipping and hopefully I get paid and stuff they might not like, you know. I can sell them the way they are without really doing anything to the motherboards. So, um, when I get a few grip on some of these things here, get organized, I'm going to start taking them and work out a deal. But... Yeah, I need to like set up vices and stuff, diff different things here, like this is a cool vice here. You can adjust in all different angles, which I kind of like, it's a neat vice. Okay, so I'm going to start working on this and I can get my lighting, hopefully. Do a little bit of time today while it's raining. At least if I can organize this back again here. And then when I have, I want to like ideally have buckets. Like, you know, even a small bucket like this for now, for wire, right? Or... You know, not too big or a five gallon pail and just have my little assortments of different metals you know valuable metals to leave locked up stuff that's cheap metals you can sit outside no big deal or not too worried but i got i have, I have security here and it was not too worried it's always someone here 24 hours a day so you know i'm not worried about that part but you know i don't want to tempt people that are leaving good stuff outside just as you can see it's this bunch of crap only way you get it you have to take it apart and who's gonna most people are not bothering anymore, so most metals are like I take it apart because it's added value. And you know, if you spend a little bit of time taking things apart, you know, you get you know, you get good metals and it takes time for sure, but you know, it keeps things going, you know, and you learn the process of a scrapping. I mean anybody can throw stuff in a truck and take it to scrap yard, right? Anybody can do that, but when it comes to taking delicate things apart and learning how things are made and you know that's kind of I think how my dad my father learned over the years he took stuff apart all the time and I guess when you take stuff apart you learn how to put it back together you learn what to unscrew first and you know like me some things you don't know you might have to smash it apart but uh, over time you learn that's why I watch lots of videos I may not comment a lot but I watch you know videos all the time about scrapping just so that I learn more or learn better ways of scrapping things that I'm doing the tricks of trade so Anyways, let's continue here. Cleaning my garage here. So basically, all these computers were sitting here, basically taking space up. So now I got a little bit of opening here. Like there's transformers and mortars. A lot of stuff here that doesn't have to stay inside here. Lots of mortars. Proper there, transformers. It's endless. Need to be processed. Water here. All mortars mixed in here. Ceiling pan mortar. Another mortar here. But a good supply, anyways. See that there? More motors. This 
transformers, another mortar, a couple of magnets sticking to it. Okay. She's getting there slowly, but it takes time. As long as I give me this little area here, like that, and I can go through these shelves to figure out what I'm going to scrap more than keep, right? Okay. So it's a work in progress. The dishwasher here. It's only a plastic one, but you know. Let's take it anyways. That's actually a metal one. Stainless steel. Yeah, that's a stainless steel one. Wow. And half stripped out. That's a bonus. Okay, that's it.